honored elected officials, whether from the federal government or the state or the county or local. I want to welcome everyone here to the Hmong Festival. It's a spe very special day for us to interact with the Hmong community. To the Hmong community, I want to say thank you. I thank you for your help, for your support, and for your friendship. Sometime in March, I announced that I wasn't going to run for re-election. And I've gotten a lot of calls, a lot of people unhappy, but I will tell you that my wife is ecstatic. <laughs> and her honey-do list is finally going to get done. So I'd also like to do a special welcome for General Vang Pao's daughter. It's so nice for you to be here, so thank you for traveling. God bless you. I wanted to talk a little bit about efforts that are going on, that have been going on. The first thing that we were able to accomplish, and it doesn't happen by one person. It happens because a group of people get together and push together, united. We were able to put a display in our Wisconsin Veterans Museum honoring the Hmong for their service, for their sacrifices, and all of their efforts that they went through in the secret war in Laos. We got together, thanks to our dear governor for signing the bill, to make every May 14th General Vang Pao Day, but really the Hmong Veterans Day. And if you think that's all we want to do, it is not. We need to do a number of other things. And I'm hopeful that in the next year, by the time we come to the, the next Hmong celebration, we're going to make some strides. The governor talked about it briefly, getting some money into the veterans organizations to deal with burying Hmong veterans. We need to record that history of the Hmong and the secret war in Laos and teach it in our schools. There is a lot of things that are going to take effort and time. A lot of the stories from soldiers once they're gone, unfortunately, those stories are gone. And I've had the privilege and the honor of not only getting to know a lot of the Hmong community over the last 40 years, but I got to know a lot of the veterans. And I can tell you the stories about how they were fearless in the fight against communism. There were Hmong veterans that slept every night in a foxhole to protect their villages. I went and spoke at a banquet for one of the old colonels. And on May 14th in, I believe, 1975, when General Vang Pao took a lot of the women and children and, and Hmong that were in Laos to the refugee camps in Thailand, this general, the Blong Tao, stayed behind and guarded the general's flanks when he was leaving. And within a period of a couple weeks, he was overrun by the communist. And he spent 11 years in a POW camp, a communist POW camp, where he endured unbelievable hardships. And he managed, after 11 years, to be able to come to the United States because his sister was here. And at the banquet, I presented him a flag from the Capitol. And the tears in his eyes told the story, probably better than words could ever do it. He understood what freedom was and what sacrifice was and what loss was. Because these soldiers, these warriors, some of them lost everything. They lost their wife, their children, brothers, sisters, parents, everything that they had in their life, they had to leave behind. That's a, a tough thing to come to a new country without knowing a language and carve out a life. I want to tell you one other thing that I think is really important. You look across the Hmong community, success. 
Their children become educated. They become professionals. Doctors, lawyers, dentists, teachers, everything that you can imagine. And you wonder why that is. Because there are many minorities that, that don't get a very easy start either. But the Hmong have made a commitment, and that commitment is to education. They want their children to have the best education that they can, that they can get for them, that they can afford for them. They want their children to excel. And yes, do they push them? You bet they do because they demand their best from their children. They also prioritize in their respect for their elders. So when you have a family that is connected together and there's respect for the elders, I think the children have an inside track. Um, I can't tell you how proud I am of the Hmong. I've known them for 40 years. A lot of them are my dear friends. Some of them are gone already, but I think those stories need to be written down. We have some of them at the Veterans Museum, but I'm gonna make an effort to make sure that they're recorded. And I think that's not only for, for the general population, it's good for the Hmong, of course, but it's good for all the children that grow up in this country to know and understand what that cost of freedom and liberty was. So with that, I would like to, with that, I would like to turn it over to Representative Pat Snyder. He has a uh, plaque that he would like to present to the veterans, but he'd also like to deliver the message to all of you. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Petrusky. A special citation to the state of, uh, from the state of Wisconsin in appreciation of the service and patriotism of the Hmong Lao veterans of the Secret War. Whereas the Hmong are a group of people who have traditionally lived in isolated villages throughout the mountain re mountainous regions of Vietnam and Laos for hundreds of years, they maintained a beautiful and distinctive culture, their own way of dress, their own music, their own history, and above all, their incredible devotion to their family and way of life. And whereas throughout the Vietnam War, the United States recruited and worked in cooperation with thousands of Hmong to fight against the North Vietnamese and Laotian Communist forces in what is referred to as the Secret War in Laos. Recruited by the Central Intelligence Agency, their primary endeavors were to disrupt the supply chain of munitions and North Vietnamese soldiers along the Ho Chi Minh Trail helped to protect the and defend strategic points such as communication towers and radar stations and to retrieve American fighter pilots shot down behind enemy lines. And whereas these Hmong soldiers fought valiantly during their covert war to help aid and assist the American effort of preventing communism from spreading deeper into Southeast Asia, they fought on the ground, flew combat missions, directed airstrikes, and gathered valuable enemy surveillance that they had shared with the American forces. The Hmong were not just our ally in this effort, but also our brothers and sisters in arms. And whereas many do not know the incredible sacrifices the ethnic Hmong made in the war effort, in terms of both military and civilian casualties, they suffered tremendous losses for their involvement. Before the war, it's estimated that between 300,000 and 400,000 Hmong lived in Laos, and it is widely believed that more than 25,000 soldiers were killed and around 100,000 civilians lost their lives during the war fighting to stop the spread of communism and ensure liberty and freedom for all peoples of Southeast Asia. And whereas following the fall of Saigon in April of 1975, Many of these Hmong patriots and their families fled the region to Seattle in refugee camps, leaving behind their homes and possessions 
with the dreams of resettling in pro-democracy Western nations. By 1978, nearly 30,000 refugees had settled in the United States, while unfortunately, those who stayed behind were subjected to genocide-like conditions, sent to POW camps, many were tortured and killed for their betrayal in working with the Americans. Now, therefore, let it be resolved, Governor Tony Evers, Senator Jerry Petrusky, Senator Tim Carpenter, Senator Brad Pfaff, Representative Pat Snyder, and Representative Jill Billings, on behalf of the state of Wisconsin, convey our deep appreciation for the friendship and bravery of the Hmong Lao veterans and their families who valiantly defended their lands, customs, and the ideals of liberty from the scourge of the communist forces. Honor those who have sacrificed their lives so that we may enjoy better, safer, and more free world. And welcome those families who have made America their home and appreciate their many contributions to our collective culture. Signed this day, July 30th, 2022. Thank you very, thank you very much for sitting, stay senator, Joe Presky, and stay assembly, uh, past Snyder, and all my friends. Uh, uh, like a major or uh, official election, every level. Thank you very much. Goha Allah, then Diana, you are a little show to honor, pay your good turn, you cheer each day and then talk like a lot. Well, Lucia, no, Lola, talk, I dear, pay your good turn, more pro children, cheer to Lucia, watch out on her, that she not be to pay your cheese here to watch who are the chat Lucia, no, you're Lucia, let's talk about the pitch, chin, pitch, and running. What's out to Moyanka to Yaka, cut tea, yet to charge young rope, tan to pay monk, plus, and I, they walk at tea chow here when it's chinning chow. It can very special to look tall even tickle, now Kunchi eat to Nippon, American, the Shinim Chai, Warwick, Shumong to Macha, the Tala, New Year, it to Chanya, I put not to Tate. ตัวใจป้องหรือยาละเตจึงชี้จะปวดตัวจอยยี่ชุนเดินละมันก็ตัวเจ้าอย่างย่าหน่อยนึกคุณชี้หนึ่งสู้หนูจอมมุ่งผ